welcome back to Masters of Modern. I am your host, now the MM Cast, but I am your host at Kets Wiley, Alex Kessler, here with my co-host at Ben Bateman Media, Ben Bateman. You stumbled and you thought about starting us over. There was a brief moment you like thought about it. I could see it. I could hear it in your heartbeat. And then you were like, nope, I'm going to go right through this. We're going to just do that intro. And that's okay. You know what, buddy? It is okay. We don't have to, I'm here we don't have to do the Twitter shout outs, everyone. People now know. I said it already. That's where you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Twitch. All the, Not YouTube. YouTube or the MMCast. Hopefully you're yeah. watching this right here. Uh, I hope so. Yeah, and, and and if you guys happen to watch this week, uh, our our little modern weekly segment that we're doing now, where we're giving you guys ten minutes of what's going on in the modern world. We just started doing it. Go check it out. It's on the YouTube channel right now. Uh, you guys can hear a whole breakdown of why the card Euro needs to be banned in modern. That's already been covered. But today we aren't talking about modern. We're talking about historic. We're talking about the historic economy. What is so hard about Historic? Why it's such a difficult format to wrap your brain around, wrap your hands around, and really invest. Starting from zero, Historic's difficult to get into, and we wanted to break it down for you guys as to why. Well, honestly, I think if just uh, Magic players stopped buying avocado toast, that the Magic economy on Arena would be would be fine. And uh, anyone who is complaining, just too much avocado toast. But uh, jokes aside, uh, we are talking about historic today, and and we're super hyped to do so. Um, and uh, if you might notice, we're going back to uh, kind of once a week videos for now, um, where we're trying to make like additional video content. We'll see what we can do. That modern video, the the redo of the Masters of Modern was kind of a an attempt to add uh, some extra content. Please uh, check out our Patreon; it, it helps us make that type of content, and it uh, maybe we'll do more with your help. And extremely appreciate to our current patrons. Um, but yeah, so 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 what kind of started this conversation was um, just kind of a realization that even for us who have played arena since beta, have been playing actively, I'm spent. I like will put like money into buying every set as it comes out, and like with a focus on historic, I like we knew like okay, like likely with the masters with modern being put to the wayside due to the COVID, historic's a format that we're going to need to do. Even with wizards very graciously like featuring us as streamers in September and giving us a bunch of free content and packs, like historic is very expensive to keep up with and and, and to do anything on and the way that like the economy works and as they add more sets, like feels untenable for this format to really survive um, or or really more importantly to add new players. Like it's different than modern or pioneer or legacy or even vintage where like when my cards rotate into the older format, they are the beginning collection to other cards that I can buy directly on the secondary market to build decks. And then I those those cards can also event either accrue value or at worst case be sold at a slight discount to the value I put into them to buy a, other cards, trade for other cards, or you know, just cash out. And and so like modern makes sense, right? I can put five thousand dollars into modern. I mean I Like, over time, I can't afford that. Uh, But, um, like, a person can... And then sell out for three thousand dollars, right? Or or, or sell out. Yeah, at, at, I mean, like generally, generally speaking, if you right, if you buy magic cards that are premium, if you're buying cards that are in high demand that have a high value, and you want to cash out and get rid of those cards, you you understand that if you want to do it quickly, you're selling to a dealer, right? So when I got my guitar and I I cashed out like three k in cards, or you know, the value on paper of those cards was closer to five, right? That's it was as little as like high fours. And so, you know, you bought a few of them from me because there were some cards you wanted that I was, was like, this is the price that the dealer is going to pay if you want them for that price. And it's a bummer when you do that because, you know, I spent 120 for like an Expedition Steam Benz at one point because right. I really wanted that card. When I sold it, I got like 70 for it or something or right. 65 right. or whatever it was, right? It's a disappointing thing to do, but you're still able to do it. And if you wanted to spend the month posting them on eBay and waiting for the eBay listings to close, you can probably get closer to actual value, but you're able to recoup some of that cost and that cost you're recouping doesn't take into account the money you made through entertainment value, right? Like, like you spent multiple hours playing with these cards that cost you, you know, normally to watch a movie would cost you 15 bucks. So like your, your entertainment value from them, not to mention the, like you, the crude value of like, there's some of the cards you sold that were like serum visions. You got opened up in packs and they were free young commons at the time. And then 10 years later, they're worth money. So like, 
I think yeah. that the value of cards you own in paper are more flexible. They're a flexible income sink. And they're also spaced out over time, right? Like I think about, again, the, the, the exchange I just made to sell so much of my collection. And, and, and I have very few memories like that Steam Vents. In fact, that Steam Vents was the single most expensive single card I think I had ever purchased in my entire life in Magic. I had never, I don't really buy expensive cards. I borrow them from friends, right, if I need them. And generally speaking, I, I, like, to, I like to buy the cheapest version of the card that I can play with. Sometimes I want to get like one card that I really like, but mostly it's I buy packs or I draft or I buy a single at a tournament that I need for the deck I'm going to play, right? And so over the years, over years and years, all the play experience, all that time and energy that, that strings together creates this memory of your life playing Magic. And so when you go and you decide to sell your cards for less than you paid for them, it doesn't really matter because you're it's almost like getting free money on some level. Right. You slowly but surely built that collection over the years. It's not like you're, you, you, you just dumped five grand, now you're going to take three for it the next week. Like That's not what the exchange is. Right, right, right. Like the money I spend on Magic, I've... I'm not spending it being like, I'm going to remake this back. I'm spending it yeah. knowing, but I probably have a higher magic budget than I would knowing that worst case scenario, rainy day fund, I could sell all of this. Yes. Or worst case scenario. Yeah. So, so, and, but the other part of that is you can, you can, you can transition pieces, right? Like I can buy into Junt and say Junt gets bad. In the metagame, like it regular, the Jun's a bad example because the Jun player is going to Jun the rest of the life. I can buy into uh, Grix's Death Shadow or Death Shadow, and I know that like this might fall out of the metagame, but at that moment, 30, like some of my cards are obviously transitionable to other decks, but other ones are sellable to or tradable to, to other players to trade for other cards I need for the new deck. Say I want to go from Death Shadow to the Jund, right? I can trade my Kroxas or my random, like, Death Shadows and get the different pieces I need to make Jund happen, right? Get get Bloodbraid Elves or whatever, get random Sixes, or I can spend a little bit of extra money to do that. And so my cards transition to different formats and different decks I'm playing a lot more easily. And we are explaining all of this because it doesn't work that way on Arena. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think with Arena, you know, there there have been digital TCGs that have tried to do it a little differently. Um, in you know, for instance, in uh, what's it called, uh, Hearthstone, I think you could dust, right? You could dust your cards, and you could you could turn them into other cards. And I think probably that Magic has considered this. They've probably thought about ways to do that and to accommodate. You know, they wouldn't want to just give you money back at a lower rate. They'd want to have you sort of trade it into other cards to keep you playing. Um, that's what the way it would be set up to be done. But, but the real problem here is that it's a clumsy and sloppy way to have to get into a new format on Arena. That's that, like, if you want to play Historic, the thing I noticed, and, and I literally had this experience, right? Like, two months ago, it was late at night, it was one or two in the morning. I had, like, had a good time hanging out on Zoom with a buddy, had a few drinks in me. I was like, ah, oh, I'm going to play some, this is going to be fun, right? I was like, oh, man, well... This deck that I'm playing isn't that good, so I'm going to try to do this shenanigans thing. Oh, I'm going to play all these hate cards together combined with these sweet cards, and it's going to be this deck, right? It's like, oh, I don't have most of these cards. Okay, I've got, you know, seven mythic wild cards. I've got, like, 11 rare wild cards. Okay, I can get most of the cards that I need with what I've got here. I'll have to skimp on a couple of them, but I don't want to spend a bunch of money on packs, so I'll just I'll burn what I have here, get as close as I can. Build the deck. It's absolutely horrible. It's not good at all. It loses pretty much every game I try with it. Uh, I get bored of playing it after an hour because I'm like, yeah, it's kind of fun, but like it's OK. This was a failed experiment. And I'm like, oh, wait, all my wild cards are gone now. I, that that idea that I had, that fun idea to try to brew something clever, that just cost me all the flexibility that I have. If I want to get a bunch of wild cards, now I've got to grind for hours and hours and hours and hours on weeks and weeks and weeks. Or I have to spend like two hundred dollars just opening digital packs. Right. Just so right. I can get wild cards. I don't even care what's in the packs. Magic is it at its funnest, I think, uh, for most players when they get to invent stuff. Right? They get to brew a yeah. deck. They get to come up with something new. And that's not necessarily true of all players. Obviously, like there are spikes. They're just like, I just want to play the best deck and I'm going to uh, metagame and pick the best one. And A, historic just like like arena in general punishes brewing so heavily. Like, like it but to the extent that like our podcast, when we started kind of transitioning away from just modern and doing all content, like one of the r issues we had running into historic is just like, it's a, it's a, 
it's barren for brewing. It's like not a fun time to brew there because the moment you come up with a deck or the moment you've like gone through your wild cards to pick up something cool and wild and it's not good, you're just wasting your money. And I can't even physically feel comfortable recommending, hey, you should dump all your wild cards into this brew deck because because then that's wrecking someone. In modern, if I'm like, hey, collected company and mere superior go for it, like... A, the cards that generally you brew with are cheap. Like it, it is less money to buy a Mir Superior than to buy a, a two tacos at Jack in the Box. <laughs> Mir Superior is bad, so it's cheap. Collected Company is good, so it costs more. But you can get your money out of the Collected Company because it's a good card, and you don't care about spending eighty cents on four Mir Superiors each because they're bad. But on so a, like, but on Arena, a Mir Superior <laughs> is as good as a Dual Land. <laughs> a Mir Superior costs the same thing as a Collected Company purely because they're both rares. Right. That's it. They just cost the same thing. Right. So, so like, it just makes coming up with cool ideas less relevant there, which, which has kind of also negative metagame effects, right? Like it means the metagame is just going to lean itself so, 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 so much more to not just like net decking, but like the tier one deck, right? Like I should not be investing in anything but goblins let's be honest like that deck has been safe for, for years or 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 the red like sacrifice deck or whatever and like which means that the metagame is going to shift less because people aren't trying to do new things even when pros get their hands on the format they can't they don't want to test they don't have like the resources to get new cards so it creates this like format that's really really hard for people to to adjust into and so it becomes very pillared to being kind of the exact same stuff all the time which makes it less fun. So it's non it's non rotating. And then it's a card format that sucks banning stuff out of more than ever. Because if I ban if I were to say ban Uro and people have a bunch of decks that Uro is the linchpin card of that deck, and without Uro, half of their cards don't work anymore because they're just Uro centric cards, that's like eighty wild cards that are just like tanked out of my account. And so it's it's I don't know what I, I, I like I look at Hearthstone and I think crafting, I look at other formats, like Magic has the problem that its cards are one to one meant to be related to real world cards. Right? Yeah. My my cards are supposed to be similar to Arena's price point. And so that's always gonna be its challenge. It's the reason that banning cards is gonna happen more often with Arena than other format other games where they like will modify the card. On the other hand, like there are things like what Hearthstone's crafting is similar. What you would do with magic, right? If I sell my scalding tarn that I bought at 80 for 40 or 60, that's literally just dusting something. It's it's I'm getting half value for a card that I paid for and I can take two cards that I paid half value for and buy another one. Right. Well, I, so I do understand your comparison there of, of like dusting. Like that makes sense to me, right? The idea that dusting a card and, and for those that don't know in Hearthstone, what it is, is that you're basically just taking the things that you have, the cards that you have, you're able to dust them, you know, turn them into something of, of significantly less value that gives you then value to get the new cards that you do need. So yeah. it's for you know, you're, every you're taking, four cards you dust, you can buy a card of, yeah. of whatever you want. And that like rarities are more expensive, but the rarities of the cards you dust, you get different values of dust. So that's, you know, that's similar to what you just said, selling a Scalding Tarn, but that only works with cards of a certain value, of a, of a high enough value with real magic cards, because if the card is worth 80 cents, a dealer's not going to buy it from you for 40 cents. They're going to buy it from you for a penny, maybe, if you're lucky. The well, card has to be worth $5, so they'll give you $2 or 250 like, for it. Like Bulk is worth 5 cents, right? Like, you can sell a, 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 a thousand count box of bulk for what five dollars i think is what it is like there's like standard rates for bulk cards in the ex like yes a common is five dollars but also when i open a pack for three dollars i'm getting 15 cards versus hearthstone where you get six so like the, the 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 how much money you spent or how much money people spent to get the cards to exist is less per card in magic which fine like let let dusting in magic let me dust all my commons and uncommons or the ra the the redundant commons and uncommons i open up packs for a 15th of 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 a card and then the rares for half of a card and the mythics for you know two thirds of a card right right or, or whatever that tr whatever that translates if if we're talking about using the the hearthstone method cuz the other option which i think is which is like the easiest way to get into historic maybe is just let people buy wild cards 
Well, yeah, so that that's what I was going to get at, right? So I, I think that there's two things to look at here. So the first one is that doesn't exist. You can't just buy wild cards, and that creates the problem. The, the big problem there is that you have to open these packs, and, and sometimes you get lucky and you open the rares that you want in the packs, but often you don't. So you end up with, you know, tons and tons and tons of these commons and uncommons and on some levels rares you'll never play with that were the cost of a pack. The whole cost of that pack was that bad rare you're never going to play with. Um, that all exists. The one thing I think that Arena does have going for it that is different than Paper Magic, though, is that if I make an Arena account right now and I go sign up, I'm going to get the little intro pack thing that they give me a few packs. You get like, you know, five packs or six packs or whatever. I get all you give me a bunch of comments. You know, that all happens. And then there's a bunch of free pack codes. Every new set, there's one that comes out that you can get three free packs of that newest set. They make it available to you. It's on the backs of cards. If you just even just Google online, a lot of the old codes still work. You can just use them and they're fine with that. They don't seem to want to change it because they want you to get three packs or six packs or nine packs for free because it encourages you to play the game. So that's all good. And I'll tell you the thing that really blew my mind was when I was sitting there playing games of Highlander Arena Gauntlet, the version that we play with Eric, and I played six games and I looked down and I realized that I was getting gold for playing those games against my friend just for fun. We were just playing 1v1 for fun matches and I was getting gold that eventually amounted to packs. So I can't go to FNM and play six games of modern against you and then walk out of there with a pack. That doesn't happen. I have to pay for the event to do that. I can just casually show up and play magic and they just give me cards. But Arena, if you're willing, just gives you cards for playing it for free. Sure. And and I think that's totally fine for standard. And honestly, I think my like personal solution at the end does define these things differently. I think in standard, Arena's great. I mean, obviously, the problem with standard on Arena is that standard has to be fun. When standard is not fun, that that's a whole dilemma. And that's another layer to this issue is like the way that magic in real world. One of the reasons that this summer was so contentious is that standard was bad and Arena standard was the only real fun way to play magic available because modern legacy commander vintage Pioneer weren't available because there was no paper tournaments and even limited wasn't really available. So when the limited was format was bad and standard was bad, if you, if you just had nowhere to go, right, there's nowhere to run to and historic, it had such a high barrier of entry at the time that that was like kind of its big limitation. So for standard, you're right. Earning like the fact that you can just play arena and earn and play for free at that base level is totally correct. And, and, and is totally a way to do it though. It is a grind. Right. Like the other thing is oh, like yeah. for you to be able to play magic in paper, you could just spend fifteen dollars and get to play where an arena, if you want to play for free, it costs you effort. And if you're not having fun doing that effort, then what's the point? But like the historic problem is also just going to get worse. Right. This is like rotation kind of proved it. Modern exists for a reason. Pioneer exists for a reason. Legacy exists for a reason. Historic exists for a reason. And that reason is, is when standard rotates magic does better for those cards that are rotating to have a home outside of that format. The yep. the magic economy and the player base needs for it to be healthy, there to be a place for cards rotating out of standard to retain value. And and modern exists for that reason. Modern modern exists for that reason. Pioneer was invented recently partially because modern was so expensive to buy into that they needed a secondary format that let you use the cards from standard that weren't seeing play in, in modern, which was kind of a response to uh, Ixel on standard more than anything, where like none of those cards did anything. It ends up that then <laughs> the following year after Pioneer was created, every single set that came out modified modern so thoroughly that it hasn't looked the same for three years, but that's a different conversation. Um, but if you wanted to jump into historic right now, if you started an account, I can't even imagine... Like, I guess, theoretically, you have to get enough wild cards to buy a single deck, right? That That's basically all you need, right? But you have to... None of the packs you're opening get you that, right? Like, you you don't get to open packs or even buy packs that buy you historic cards. You have to open exactly 60 wild cards. Well, you don't necessarily need 60. And also, on top of that, because what I've found when I'm building decks is, you know, you play and you play, you play, you get a bunch of gold. So then your gold gets you packs. And I go, okay, well, I've got this gold. I'm going to go buy... 12 packs to get wild cards, but those 12 packs I'm going to buy, I want to have the highest likelihood to open the cards that I actually need. So then you look and you go, okay, well, there's the most rares missing from this set. So I'm going to buy all Amonkhet Remastered or whatever. And you also want to buy all the ones that are not 
the whatever the current standard set that they're giving you for playing games is. You want to buy all the ones that you don't ever get to open. So you only kind of want to buy the special sets. But I know for sure you can't buy the the master sets things, right? They stopped you. You are no longer able to buy like master's edition or historic historic remastered or whatever the the like 12 cards that got added to it oh, oh yeah could you ever buy those though you yeah, could yeah, buy yeah. Those the first three you could just buy not as packs you just straight up bought each card you got all of them for like 12 dollars. Oh. that was great right like I, that's that's kind of my point like what i think they should do is i think they should sell historic wild cards I think that's the answer to this problem. I think that's the answer to this problem in regards to if they do not want to drastically change the arena ecosystem, which I think at this point they don't. I think my personal recommendation and solution is for $4, you get a pack of wild cards that are only available to be spent on on non-standard cards. They're like, you still have to, if you want standard cards, you got to buy standard packs. You got to do what you've been doing this whole time. Those will still get you wild cards that you can use on any card you want that are more valuable than these. But for $4, I get some amount of rares, some amount of uncommon, some amount of commons, and every four comes with a mythic rare, but only available to buy cards that are no longer in standard. It's kind of the best of both worlds, right? I can now invest in historic. I can now brew. If I'm like, you know what? For this podcast, I'm going to brew a cool dune deck. I need 20 new cards. I'll buy five of these packs. That's 20 bucks. I now... 20 bucks in can now buy this deck added to the other, you know, the other cards I already own and great. We're off to the races and maybe you have to buy an extra one. Cause I didn't get the mythic in the fourth one that I wanted to fine, but that at least puts me in a position where I can now buy older cards and people can invest and start building decks in older formats. Like people that, that kind of to me keeps historic more sustainable. Yeah. I think, I think that's a pretty fair point. Um, I, I definitely think that there has to be, there's an economic change that has to happen for this to be a long-term sustainable thing. And what's funny about it is I think historic is closer to being that sustainable long-term rotate, long-term rotating format than they've had. I think modern was it for a long time in paper. It was a great format. I think like it still is awesome. It's we're in a little bit of a weird nexus point because of COVID. But I think Modern was totally that format for quite a while. They had finally found their version of Extended that they knew Extended that they wanted to work and people embraced it. And we had a whole podcast about it. And I kind of felt like Pioneer was almost going to be that, but it didn't quite become that. And Historic kind of has the potential to be it. They just have to figure out a way to fix it so that people are drawn to it and want to invest in it. I, I really... Yeah. And I think I think that's brewing, right? Like like our podcast is the most yeah. successful modern podcast. I I, th I still think it actually is that. I mean, we still talk about modern and we're going to bring that back more, but is the most successful modern podcast. And our podcast was focused to some extent on coming up with cool wacky ideas in the format, which I think is the most popular way people like to attack these older formats. People liked modern cuz forever it was a brewer's paradise. Every year a weird deck Won a GP or a Pro Tour, Lantern Control, Amulet Titan, <laughs> uh, yeah. Death Shadow. Like all of these decks were decks that like didn't exist or like were weird and different. And they did well because people brewed and come up with cool ideas and historic and the way that the wild card economy is built does not encourage that. And I think that will always lead to the metagame becoming stale, which then will always lead to people either not wanting to play or wizards having to ban cards, which will lead to people not wanting to play it. And I think, I think that's the problem with historic and, and not being able to come up with cool ideas and not be extremely punished for it, which right now you are is a problem. And I do think, I do think just like the same way in modern, if I brew a bad deck and maybe that deck's just not that good, not good enough, but some of the pieces I can use for another deck and I'm out, maybe, maybe some amount of money. It, but I can recoup that money with money. I can buy other cards to keep playing the format in arena. If I buy into a deck that's bad, I'm wrecked. And I either, and I can't get it again until I spend way more money where most of the cards I'm going to be getting are standard only like our cards that I'm never going to want to play with. So as a historic player are no benefit to me or I'm just SOL until like I like grind enough matches to get enough wild cards. I, I don't think that's sustainable. I don't think that keeps historic popular or grows historic in a way that wizards would want. And I think they need historic to be popular for all the reasons we discussed. I was gonna say, so right now as it is, what's the starter pack? If somebody comes they're listening to this and like, I'm gonna give historic a shot on arena. I wanna have fun with it. I don't really have a collection. 
what do I do? How do I start? Because I have I have ideas. I mean, I, I have I have the things that I would suggest you do. I mean, straight up, I would buy in the goblins. I would dump enough money in, like say a hundred bucks. Like look at which packs have like the most goblin cards that are relevant, that are rares to that deck existing, and then and then hope you get enough wild cards to buy into gob. Like if that if that that has to be maybe the cheapest. I guess we can I mean, that's, look, if you're actually, talking yeah. about you're talking about winning in, in historic, and I think like to build the goblins deck, you need four Muxus, and you definitely need uh, Krenko, and you definitely need like like I think there's a bunch of rares you need for that deck. Even if you're just playing best of one, you still probably yeah. I mean, rares and mythics. You probably still need like sixteen to twenty would be my guess. I think I just just right. I think Gruel Aggro is the deck. Uh, even this has a lot of rares in it, actually. It's, it's it's there's not a good solution for like a, a, a premium deck you're gonna be able to just like build straight off the bat so what i would what i would say i would recommend to someone to do if they wanted to get into this thing is i would go okay like number one google uh free arena codes just google it there's a bunch of, there's a bunch of sites that list the free arena codes whatever the current set is you'll have that plus often you can go back as far as like six old sets and you just you go type them in gives you three free packs so right off the bat you'll be able to go and get yourself like 15 18 packs probably unless they fix it but i don't think they're going to because i don't think they want to i think they want you to be able to get those packs because it gets you into the game they're going to give you a few things go do all of the color challenges and all of those initial little like ro- like they're they're annoying because you're playing like commons and bad cards but set aside an afternoon try to knock out as many as you can the more you do that the more you're going to get gold the more you're going to get free stuff set an amount of money probably i would say you could probably get away with spending 50 bucks i think like a 50 dollar gem bundle gets you a lot of gems Um, you could even do it for like 20 bucks if you don't want to spend a lot of money. Uh, and what I would do is pick either the thing you enjoy the most. So if you like playing limited, if you're a good limited player, like you draft really well, I would go and I would try to draft, win some games. You, you only have to win like three games to get your packs back basically. So you're able to grind much more successfully than an actual F and M on a Friday night. Cause like F and M on a Friday night, you're usually playing against some pretty good players. It's It's hard to win consistently. It's much easier to do it if you're if you're playing on Arena. And then last but not least, I would go through the metagame decks at that particular moment. Right now, as you said, Black Red, Sac- Black Red Sacrifice is good. Um, definitely the the no, Goblins no. deck is very good. So so Goblins is bad. So so because uh, remember, cost doesn't matter, and that that was what I was looking at. In paper, Goblins is cheaper than Black White Sacrifice. Uh, Black Red Sacrifice has 20, 19 rares plus one in the sideboard for twenty rares, um, and. So six of those, eight of those, sorry, 10 of those, 10 of those are the land. So only 10 rares outside of your mana base, um, which you could cheat on if you need to not want to do fabled passages or whatever. And then it has five mythics and that's it. Everything else is on commons and commons. So, so for 25 rare slot, uh, wild cards and a bunch of uncommons and commons, you have a full competitive historic, uh, deck. And, and this deck has also been competitive and historic, Basically, since the beginning, there are cards that fall in and out of favor in this deck that are good or bad, but nothing that you're investing here is bad and you can always get other cards if you need them uh, as time goes on. So you can you can buy all the way back to what's the oldest set on here. So you can buy packs of Kaladesh Remastered. You can buy packs of Amonkhet Remastered. You can buy Ixalan. You can okay, buy so you Rivals. Can buy everything. Yeah, oh, you everything can't, you is can't available. buy Double Masters and you can't buy... Not double bands. You can't buy uh, not double masters. The, the historic remastered. Yeah, but you no, you no, were never no. able to. No, no, no. You can't buy um, the two packs that shuffle into one pack decks. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, uh, jumpstart. Jumpstart. Yes. You can't buy jumpstart packs, and you can't buy um, the the historic le- uh, the historic like bundles that had 15 cards. You used to be able to buy those, but you no longer can. There's been three. That's okay. where like Fauna Shaman comes from, and the cycle lands. Um, those are the ones you can't buy. Everything else, it sounds like. If you can buy Ixalan, you can buy everything else. Oh, look at that. You can get a fancy opt. So, so yeah, Google free codes. There's a bunch of cool stuff on there. Huh, look at that. Yeah, I think I think that's fair. Like, right, like Black Raid Sacrifice is the easiest entry point. Um, and there's there's a, a other, like, value list you can look up, but that's, like, if you want a, a, a sorry, it's Rakdos Arcanus is the, is the, is the deck I was talking about. Um, there's okay. a green, there's a Jun Sacrifice deck that's more expensive. Um, 20 wild cards, you're into Historic. If you don't like that strategy, though, then you're, you're looking at something higher. If you want to change to something else or you just don't want to play one of the top five best decks and you want to, like, try something cool and new or if a card gets banned or the metagame shifts, 
you're just kind of SOL. And that's, and that's kind of where I'm at. And, and, and obviously, this is me also looking in the future, right? Like right now, it's tenable. It's not as bad as it could be, but I think this is a problem that gets worse over time. And I do think, I do think finding a solution is something that's needed for historic in the long run because of the, like the brewing problem. I don't think it's fun to make up decks in historic. And that's a huge problem for magic in general. That's the reason we play magic. If I wanted to play games where people are like, here's the best deck, not even the best deck. Here is a, a game board that you get to play with and you have to choose this exact same one. That's cause that's the best meta deck. That's not magic. That's that's like I don't know chess or football or I don't know uh, like a bas- like a basketball game. Like a, yeah, it's like Madden, right? Like here's your pieces. You don't get to change them. They're not interchangeable. You just get to play with the ones you have. There are board games that are like that. There's tons of them, but it's not what's yeah. It's not a customizable fun. collectible card game. I mean, that's the whole idea of Magic is that it's a backwards compatible puzzle. They keep right. adding new add-ons to it. That's what makes it fascinating. It's why we've played it yeah. for our whole lives. There are other solutions. Other games do it differently. There's some games that just like, let you straight up buy any card you want, right? Like they just straight up just have a store. You can just spend real dollars on it. I don't think that's probably best for, for Arena. Uh, Hearthstone has its model. I think actually the Hearthstone model is probably one of the better ones. There's a reason that game was as successful as it was. Um, I think that there's a few things from that, like Hearthstone that I think Arena can take. The, the other one being... Um, they have like fun drafts that are free. You like don't get any cards from it. You would just earn gems, but you could do like like cube drafts and not keep the cards for minimal amounts of money where magic generally makes you spend a lot of money on those events. So there's like nothing you can do just to have fun unless you want to just like grind standard if standard is boring. Like I think that's one of the problems arena has is when standard is good, arena is great. But if standard is not good, there's not a lot of places you can run to an arena that are fun. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely it's definitely a lot of work uh, to create anything. Oh, wow. There's there, I just found I just found a bunch of sweet uh, codes. I'm just sitting here typing them in. A lot of them are cool. They're cosmetic you can get a lot of free stuff. Fun. <laughs> I'm having a good time. I'm having a good time. <laughs> if you tweet at Ben at Ben, but media, he will tweet you some of these cool codes. Yeah, I just uh, got some full art Zendikar lands. Those are pretty cool looking. Nice. Um, but yeah, so that's, that's, that's the first one. And then the second one is, yeah, like looking at ways that like make it easier. And I don't even like, I'm not even against, I understand magic is a game you have to buy into. Uh, like there are cheaper things and hobbies out there. I, I understand that wizards just make money. And I don't, I think just if they were just like here, here are wild card packs. I think people would eat it up and allow people to brew and allow people to come up with new stuff. And it, I don't think they would lose money. Cause I think right now people just aren't doing it. Right. I can hey, think- don't you don't you feel like okay, so so let's talk through it this real quick. So so uncommon and common wild cards are like most people have an abundance of them. If you play a arena even for a little while, you get a lot. I mean, maybe they would need to find a way to sell them like a pack, but like if you drop two hundred dollars into arena, you will have enough common and uncommon wild cards to never need them again. Yes, exactly. But it's the rares and the mythics that are hard ones. I think at first it's the rares because the rares are the lands. That's why the, that's why the rares at first are the most prominent. Once you have the mana base, though, it's the it's the mythics that become the problem because when you want to build a new deck, often you need eight or you need 12 mythics in the deck, and they're way harder to get. They come slower. So once you burn all the ones you have, it gets more and more difficult. So I think if they were going to do this correctly, they would probably need to charge you for the price of a pack for a mythic wild card, is my guess. They would probably need to charge you something in the range of 3 to $4 for a mythic wild card. What's they would probably saying- need to charge you. That's why I was saying do packs instead of instead of straight up a dollar for a while, or some amount of money for a wild card. So like three dollars you get, uh, like yeah, three dollars you get two rares and two rares, two uncommons, or two rares, three uncommons, five commons or whatever. It doesn't the that number doesn't matter to me at all. And then one out of three packs gets you a mythic instead of one of the rares. I think they couldn't make it that affordable. I think it would take away from the sale of packs too much. So then two, one uh, rare, then one rare. Yeah, I think I think realistically it would be like four ninety nine would get you like th- yeah, three un- three commons, two uncommons, and a rare. And sometimes that one of those other cards is a mythic or something. Say what? It's more than a pack. I think three ninety nine is like a normal. Well, you don't get you don't get a wild card in every pack. A lot of wild, a lot of packs you don't get a wild card. Sure, but you're getting more cards. Yeah, it's fair. I mean, I think there would have to be a balance that it was obviously you weren't just going to get because nobody would ever buy packs then. They, they can't they well, can't erase. Well, the, and that's, uh, but remember, the point is that these are for only cards that are not in standard. Oh, 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 oh yeah. OK, if you can't buy standard cards with them, then I think that the cost can be a lot more like, like what you're talking about. The thing is, they, they would still need to make it such that you would want to be burning through those packs to get your mythics, because otherwise I think it would just people would get over it too fast. 
and from a business so, perspective, so lower the lower do. the mythic release, I guess. Even I don't even know if yeah. that's true though, because I think like like if I can't get standard cards, they're printing standard cards at a power level that I'm going to need to open standard packs, right? Like that's that doesn't go away. So so you'll have the same rate of return on standard players that you currently have, because the historic sure. players that want to play with standard cards, which they will, because stuff like Uro gets printed. Like right now, I couldn't get an Uro unless I got real wild cards. So it like yeah. it it it. it Unless they stopped printing powerful things into standard, which like I don't think is happening. Uh, even if they pull way back on the power level, I don't think historic's gonna be outweighed. Um I think I think that to me is what makes the most sense. And and maybe you put a like a, a time limit also, like remastered sets, it's like six months. Like a, a set has to have been printed over a year ago or whatever, like however you want to figure it out. It, to me it's the solution that I've heard that sounds the most tenable and I, I'm not going to talk about what the price point should be or like how common a mythic should be. Uh, right. Like it, maybe it's every three packs. There's a mythic or every five packs or the same rarity right now that you would get a mythic is how often you get a mythic wild card in these wild card packs, but you're guaranteed to get the rares and it just lets people buy in. I would drop a lot of money. I would drop like $40 a month at times just to like be able to make a cool, historic deck when i thought about it yeah i mean there were i definitely feel like that thing you're talking about uh i burned myself out of historic that one night that was kind of it i was like i had a really fun time i climbed i got to mythic in historic that was a cool thing i wanted to do it i, I made it made it to mythic with my deck and i was grinding a lot and then i got there and i was like okay so this cost me a pretty good amount of money a lot of time i don't have any wild cards now more than once to build this one deck so i did and now it was like I don't really want to spend another hundred dollars to be able to build com comfortably and quickly the next deck that I want to build. I, I did a lot of this already. And you no longer trust yourself. Yeah. Right. Like you've, you've not only lost faith in the game, but you've lost faith in yourself because the risk is much higher. The, like the, the risk to, to brewing in arena is so much higher than it is in, in paper magic. Even if on like a yeah. dollar, the dollar basis, it isn't like the negative is worse, right? It's, it's not necessarily, if I want to brew in modern, no collection, Right. Like we're, we're, I guess like apples to apples. They don't have a collection of modern 500 bucks because it's just, just for the land. Right. Maybe more, yeah. but I own those cards. Now I can sell them. I can get rid of them. I can do whatever I want with them. If I want to brew in historic 200 bucks, right? Just that. So, so half the cost, but then that deck sucks. Most of yes. that deck is just aether. Can't sell it. Can't get my money back. Yes. I can maybe use the lands in another deck, but then I'm still on arena and I have to spend another hundred dollars to be able to get the wild cards for that deck. So it's like a sunk cost moment. And I, that, that sucks. And then I don't want to play historic ever again. And maybe I don't want to play arena. I know a lot of people that don't want to play arena ever again. There's also the other added part of this, which is that like, it's not like the people that create magic content aren't the people that play magic. So then you end up in a situation where people like us, whose sole purpose to is to enjoy ourselves playing magic. And like, we want to talk about our enjoyment of magic we'd end up doing an episode like this, not because we're trying to like bring down the system, but because it's a real conversation about, Hey man, what was the last time you played a lot of historic? It's like, eh, it's been a few months probably, you know, since I really played a lot of historic and it's like, how come this is the conversation? Why? And that's a tough thing. That's a tough thing for them to contend with because I would rather be in the situation that we were in three months ago where we were talking about how sick the decks we were playing were and how excited we were about them and how excited we were to build the next deck. That's what I would rather be doing on this episode. It's just, I don't want to go drop a bunch of money. I don't want right. to spend a bunch of money. Right. No, I, like, know? and that, and like, I'd spend the money, right? Like, that's the, 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 the issue here isn't like, I would drop, if they created these wildcard things, I would drop $40 to come up with a new deck that I knew was going to go away. It's a different mindset, I think, and the ability that, like, you're kind of locked out and you have to go through the whole pack opening thing and you might get cards you need. It's just, it feels a lot less good to come up with new cool stuff in historic at the moment. And I think they need to fix it. Agreed. Uh, also, ban Uro is my mic. Yeah, <laughs> as, as the also, end of yeah. it, just in every format, <laughs> ban him. He's bad for everyone. Why does that cart do all the things that it does? I like, and it's right up my alley. I want to put stuff in my graveyard and take it out of my graveyard and put it back into my graveyard and take it out of my graveyard and Ben, you know, make invalidate whatever strategy Ben is playing <laughs> that involves one one flyers that don't matter. Once I have a six six in play that I can re regurgitate. Uro was a card that was made for me 
and I'm mad at it and want it to go away. <laughs> uh, so definitely my, check out my the two one. Up. My my two one flyers are never going to be good against Uro. <laughs> uh, check out the modern video we did uh, last week. Did a Masters of Modern episode uh, just about uh, banning Uro. Uh, check that out. It released on the YouTube channel. Uh, also, if you're an audio listener, please check out the YouTube channel as well uh, and check out our Patreon. It's where we do we have like bonus content. There's a whole 15 minute episode at the beginning of this that we release only there in video form. Check that out. Uh, and uh, make sure to like and subscribe. Hit that like and subscribe button. Hit it, the button. It's important. And I we- said it. Yeah, I said it on our last video as well. Like, subscribe. And, and the one thing that we really want to ask you guys to do if you're watching this on YouTube right now is that uh, if you guys, as soon as you're done watching this or listening to this, uh, even if you just want to do it right now, you just want to pause this and just go leave us a comment about the video. Uh, comments really, really help these videos. They really do help them perform. They help them uh, spike up in the, in the standings. We don't want to use that A word because I think YouTube hears it. I think they make our videos do worse if we say it. But uh, we'll just say it helps the videos perform better. And uh, if you guys if you guys just want to leave a comment, uh, it would really mean a lot to us because we are trying to grow this channel. And uh, if you're listening this long, then I think you probably want to help us grow this channel as well. So we want to continue to bring you awesome content. Just leave a comment, anything you want. You could talk about uh, this guitar, that hula hoop. It's not a hula hoop, it's a hoop. Uh, you it's could talk about hoop. any number of cool things. Yeah. It's an ice hoop, mm-hmm. way better than a hula hoop. Uh, you can talk about Alex's shirt, anything you want. Just leave us a comment. This is my jellyfish dance. I just want yeah. people to send me videos on Twitter of them doing their jellyfish dance or pick your own sea creature. You got a c- crab? I did a crab car impression. Beep, beep. Beep, beep. That's my car crab, car crab impression. All right. So <laughs> thank you, everyone. Thank you, patrons. Thank you, listeners. Thank you, followers. Thank you, all the people of the internet. And we will talk to y'all next week. Uh, oh, actually, yeah. Monday. Because we release, or today, tonight, make sure to check out uh, live stream Commander on YouTube and on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Cass Wiley, YouTube slash dot com slash the MMCast. We do live both places and the video just exists here. So if you missed it, it's just here. It exists uh, last week. Um, we had... We had on ALK Alters. Oh, yes. And Jay and Ellie, uh, who did that, uh, like, the Commander Legends, like, book about all the different legendary creatures in it. He's, like, a big Vorthos guy, and ALK is a great Alterist. So check out both of them, and check out the video where we did a live stream with them. It's really cool. Thank you, everyone. I played Twin Cast on my time stretch. It was epic. It was bad for everyone. It was bad for me. It was bad for everyone. But I also, uh, well, I won't tell you what I did in game one because it was dope. Uh, All right. Thank you, everyone. And we'll talk to you all next week. Bye. Bye, guys. This has been a production of Time Traveler Media. Sending podcasts into the future.